Well, welcome to Noel's World of Whiskey. I have to wear my uh, Scottish uh, sweater today because we got Scottish weather. <laughs> and uh, I swear the best weather I had was back in Scotland. <laughs> we got Scotland back here, but eventually we'll get some summer. Um, interesting thing, I just finished uh, doing um, the uh, the new 18 against the old 18, and I actually I've got my second. I was lucky to get a couple of uh, 18s, and I got uh, two of them. I've emptied one already. <laughs> I'm not buying another, not at 215, 220 pounds in the distillery, and who knows, what are we paying, 400 bucks or something like that, probably back here in Canada. So. That's probably my last 18 for a while, uh, unless we see a deal or something on an 18. But um, what I noticed uh, when I got back, I never paid a lot of attention to the, the samples. I was too focused on the 18 and, uh, and the 25. And so I had these drams, and of course I had extra drams. We had more than just myself there. It was four of us. The interesting thing is that uh, I, I ended up you know, I'm kind of looking through these, and I see something called Wilder Seas. Now, I'd never heard of it. And uh, you, you, you saw my presentations, and uh, I do show, you know, in the, uh, you know, in the, in the distillery tour, as well as my little tour there, I, I show the, uh, uh, the Talisker uh, uh, whiskeys and that in their uh, visitor center. And, and I went through quite a quite a few whiskeys there. I just don't remember the Wilder Seas. So I started researching it a bit and read a few reviews and, and you know, what I've learned about this is this is something different. It was a partnership with the um, international organization Parley. Now, Parley is basically, their focus, they're, they're an organiza organization focus on uh, rebuilding our oceans and I actually have probably the, to simplify it I've got a really good little thing here from the Parley website and it basically what it says right on the website it says forest of the sea is a leading holistic approach to protection of kelp forests around the world that prioritizes uh, and supports the development of local and indigenous global culture uh, using exploration science community involvement, policy change, and media as powerful tools to shift the narratives. And me being, a, you know, I, I was a commercial fisherman. I was very much uh, into the ocean, obviously. Uh, you know, I made, made, made my living from the ocean. A good chunk of my life was on the ocean. Uh, this is interesting stuff to me because I've seen a lot of uh, deterioration on our, our coasts. It's not just in Scotland, but here in North America along, uh, you know, the Oregon coast, the Washington coast, British Columbia, right up to Alaska. Now, it, it's quite interesting because what they're saying here, basically, uh, it's a collaboration between Talisker and, and, and Parley. Uh, and we know it's a, an organization dedicated to preserving our oceans. And to create more awareness... Uh, the, the idea was that to be able to achieve a little bit more with these partnerships uh, and, and, and of course it helps if you can get the government involved and the community and the environmental groups uh, and brands such as Adidas, Dior and of course why not Talisker. Um, and um, you know for this partnership Parley and Talisker are teaming up to raise money for a few key projects to, to save and preserve our, our sea forests and of course this is off the coast of Scotland, Chile and South Africa. These sea forests which also occur all over the coast of the Isle of Skye, you know, home of Talisker, uh, currently cover 25 percent of all coastlines on earth and I can verify to that. We all know about kelp and uh, unfortunately they're disappearing four times faster than the rainforest and I was a bit shocked to, to read that because I thought I knew quite a bit about the ocean obviously I don't uh, but uh, you know it, it's, it's it's interesting stuff what they're doing now I'm going to show you a picture of this bottle it's recycled glass and it's got to be one of the classiest looking bottles I don't have one so I'm going to show you one
Let's get into Wilder Seas. We're going to pour a dram. And then we'll take a peek at it. I'm going to change lenses so we can have a, a little better lens. This is the lens I used in Scotland. I switched lenses in Scotland because of uh, when I was touring. I found the 30 was, uh, wasn't the right lens for what I was, uh, what I was doing. But uh, this kind of stuff, I haven't changed my lens yet. I've got so many lenses, but to get the right lens, I need, a, I need about a 20 or a 25 lens that gathers more light. And I will be getting one, so... Um, anyways, uh, it's not a super colored whiskey, but I just know Talisker's, you know, Diageo is notorious for using uh, E150s, so I'm going to say there's coloring in this, and we also know this is an unusual bottling, 48.5%, where they really don't have to chill filter. Have they chill filtered it? There's nothing... Uh, I could find in the reviews. Nobody has any information on it. Uh, so we just don't know. But at 48.5, they shouldn't really need to uh, chill filter it. But. So I switched lenses so that I we got a little bit better light here. And I'm going to bring this drink up. Something I noticed, I, there's a little bit of mist in this. And uh, we were talking about chill filtering. And of course, that's a sign of non-chill filtering, but I think there's a little bit of mist in this. So. so it just doesn't look like there's a pile of coloring in this. Uh, I mean, you've got the the cognac casks, the oak, and I'm certain it was uh, it was uh, started off in bourbon. So uh, I'm not sure if you can uh, if you can see the mist, but uh, hopefully you can see the the legs there. They're there. So there is some body to it. There's a little bit of viscosity to it. So. Um, Wilder Seas, uh, 48.5, finished in cognac casts. Uh, this is a first for, um, you know, for, for Talisker. They've never done this before. So I, I've had uh, a few cognac uh, finished whiskeys, so I am familiar with them. Let's give Wilder Seas the nose. Solange. Just a slight whiff of smoke with lots of toffee and even maybe some custard, a little bit of uh, salty, briny air, getting some, golly, uh, I, I almost an oily um, stain. Uh, Finish, you know, for finishing wood. I would say some of your wood preserving uh, stains uh, to nail a maybe a neat's foot. And there's that salty air, some seaweed. I, I love the, the balance here. Um, I'm right on the beach, but I've got enough sweetness that it's not overbearing the, the smoke or the peat. Beautiful nose to this. Uh, that's all I'm going to say. It's got a beautiful nose. Um, we're getting right into the palate. Salangela. Oh boy. Mint. Um, sweet chocolate mint. A wee bit of tobacco, minty tobacco. <laughs> um, got dark chocolate, dark minty chocolate. Um, boy. Uh, apple crisp. Uh, maybe even some uh, blackberry, blueberry crisp with apples in it, granola, malt, back to the mint, nice coating on the mouth. You know, it's, um, I'm not, it's not a dryness to it, um, which is kind of neat. Um, but um, as far as the cognac, um, it's a little bit um, 
little more emphasis than, than some of the cognac uh, finished whiskies I've had, but uh, not over overpowering. It's a nice balance because uh, I am I am getting a little bit of that cognac. I know I am. Um, you do get that sweetness, uh, the uh, the toffee, um, but the mints there and the licorice is here, and it's uh, more the dark licorice. Um, darn it, I'm getting into some dirty chai tea. And um, spicy. You know what? This is different. This isn't your typical Talisker. Um, I used to have so many bottles of Talisker. This is what I'm down to. That's the direction I've gone with Talisker. In the, you know, in the early days, I was a, such a Talisker fan. I had, you know, always four or five bottles. But obviously things have changed. But if they can do this, boy, I'd be buying bottles of Talisker again. So um, let's, uh, I'm going to put a little more in here because I'm going to be working on the development and the finish. You know, I, I just did um, the 18. So this is kind of good to get right into this because... You know, I, I can take the 18 and I'm comparing um, this whiskey, which is a non-age statement, so we know it's a lot younger than the 18. The 18's finished, what, 45.8? This is 48 point, uh, what was it? Uh, it's finished at 48.6. So, um, for non-age statement, I don't know, what is it, a 10, 12? It, it, it seems more than a 10. You know, I, I like the 10. Uh, it's, I like the price of the 10. <laughs> but this just seems to be an older whiskey, so I don't know how old it is. I, I'm guessing it might even be a 12. Uh, there could be some younger whiskeys and older whiskeys in here. So, Anyways, um, the development and the finish. Solangeva. Oh, it's sweet. Bit of rubber. And not that I chew on rubber. <laughs> I took a whiff there. That's where I got the rubber from. <laughs> but that mint is not going away. Neither is the licorice. Um, lots of malt. Uh, the granola is more uh, fruity granola with, um, you know, the dates, the raisins, the dark fruits. Um, but lots of, um, like that apple, blueberry, um, and, and it's something we used to make out where I used to camp, and that apple, blueberry, uh, blackberry, we pick them, eh? and um, man, you make it, you make homemade, we had a great uh, baker out there where we camped, and uh, boy, that stuff was good. So we got a little bit of that. Um, finish is going to be medium. It's not short, it's not long, it's right in the middle, and um, it's just so incredibly balanced, this, this whiskey. It's, the smoke is not overbearing. It's, it's a talisker where the smoke is, it's different. It's not a powerful smoke, but it's there, and it just seems so balanced with, um, you know, the cognac, the oak. The oak's not bitter. There's no, uh, you know, no astringency there. There's a little bit of medicinal stuff that I got uh, uh, in the nose. I didn't mention it, but, I, you know, it was there. I, I, I always say, you know, I iodide and all that. There was a wee bit of that. I, w I think I just said seaweed, but let's face it. There's lots of iodide and seaweed, so kelp and that. So that's part of the ocean. Um, I, I'm going to say that finish is just starting to disappear now. Just, it's still there. It's still got a coating. So, um, putting a little water in this, uh, I'm just going to put a drop or two. Uh, it just, it's just damn good <laughs> the way it is. I don't want to spoil it. Three drops. All okay, the nose with water. We're getting uh, really kind of amplifying 
those notes, the sweetness, the, the, the smoke is uh, more the salty coastal air, um, slight bit of smoke mixed with a, like a campfire in the distance. There's the cognac, getting the pineapple, a little bit of the tropical fruits. Now the dark ones come in, the dark fruits are coming in. It's what the it's still what smelling, but with a bit of licorice mixed in. The mint is still there. The malt is still there. The oak has disappeared. So malt, um, uh, and the cognac influence with the, with our uh, apple, blueberry, blackberry crisp, uh, some dates. Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to say now, we were talking about the, um, the dirty chai tea. It's getting chocolatey. Sweet. With water, the palate. Just beautiful. It's one of the better calisters I've had, period. This is like the, this is like this guy here, when I first started drinking the 18, the, the old 18. That's a little newer than the, 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 I have the older version of that. It's got um, just so, so much balance to it. And it's not, um, I like it when the, you know, the smoke doesn't steal the distillery character. Uh, I, I'm tasting the distillery character of Talisker here. Uh, the smoke isn't hiding it. The, um, the cognac is perfect. It's not hiding it. You still have that distillery character of, of, uh, of Talisker. Uh, the cognac and the malt, uh, the granola, a little bit of uh, cereal notes there. You know, so Wilder Seas, um, boy, what do I think of it? I'm impressed. Non-age statement. Uh, my understanding was it was uh, in UK, Scotland, it was around 80 plus 85, 85 pounds. That's, that's going to be an argument, uh, how much you really want to spend on a whiskey that's a non-age statement, but... Um, it's a nice whiskey. I, I would, I would score this, uh, I would score this higher than I would normally score a Talisker, right? You know, other than the 18. I think the 18 ended up with an 87. Uh, the, this one ended up with an 88, but this guy's uh, somewhere in the 85, I'm going to say an 85 to 86 area. Um, it's a nice whiskey. It really is. Uh, if you could get it at a decent price. Here in Canada, I'll, I'll buy a bottle. So, on that note, I am going to ask you to drink wisely, drink intelligently, and do not drink and drive. Until the next time, slash.